Good evening, Prescott Valley. This is the Parks and Recreation meeting for Tuesday, November 13th. And we'll start off with a roll call, please. Commissioner Freyer? Here. Commissioner Polkin? Here. Commissioner Brinkman? Here. Commissioner Fallman? Here. Chairperson Gummer? Yes. Moving on, we'll go to the approval of the agenda. And do I have a motion for the approval of the agenda? I move that we approve the agenda for this evening of November 13th, 2018. Have a motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Moving on, we'll go to the approval of minutes from the October 9th regular meeting minutes. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the October 9th, 2018 regular meeting minutes. I have a motion to have a second. I'll second. second it. Yep. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Moving on, we'll go to our scheduled announcements. We'll go to Brian. All righty. We've got a couple of goodies in here we want to make sure you and everyone else has in their calendar. First of which is Friday, November 30th. Please plan to join us here at the Prescott Valley Civic Center for the Festival of Lights and Light Parade brought to you by the Town of Prescott Valley and Prescott Valley Chamber of Commerce, our awesome partner there. Our event will start at 5 p.m. Uh, with school music groups, a welcome by the mayor, followed by a wonderful reading of The Night Before Christmas by our very own Chamber of Commerce Director, Marnie Ural. Lighting ceremony at 6 p.m. when we flip the big switch, lighting up the entire campus, immediately followed by the light parade that will circle the Civic's Circle property here that will travel up and down Main Street and around the Civic Center. Uh, we are accepting parade entry still, so please get a hold of the chamber at 772-8857, or you can visit them online at pvchamber.org and download that registration form, but please get it off to them soon. Look forward to having everyone here on site. We have thousands that are in attendance for that particular evening, so we look forward to seeing everyone here. In addition to the, these activities, we also have an opportunity with Pictures with Santa on this particular evening from 6.30 until 8. These will be taking place on the third floor of the Civic Center. Parents will be given a link to the free online photos of their children with Santa, so don't forget to make your list. Bring it. Santa wants to hear all of these good things. Compliments of the Parks and Recreation Department and the Arts and Culture Division. Pictures with Santa will be on site again Friday, November 30th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Also in the Prescott Valley Library is our 17th annual exhibit of the Create a Tree. This is your way to promote your organization in a free and fun artistic holiday display. Your creativity is highly encouraged. Applications are being accepted for uh, through November 15th. That's only two days away. So you can go ahead and download those off of the town website and fax them or email them into us. The setup dates for the event take place on the 28th and 29th of November. And the People Choice Award is um, presented to those uh, or to that particular entry based upon votes that take place throughout November 30th to January 2nd. All trees must be removed then following on January 3rd. So we encourage everyone that would like to come out here, decorate the Prescott Valley Library, as well as hopefully expanding this into the Civic Center with all of our fabulous created tree entries. Get your organization group out there and design. We've had some very cool past entries. We've had an automotive shop make their display out of all the different parts uh, composed of exhaust to gears, transmission shells, you name it. They had some really cool stuff in there, some performing arts groups, had banjos and fiddles and all of these types of things, beauty salons. I've had mannequins and chairs and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, some of our local schools or daycare facilities have created out of different boxes and taken different shapes. Uh, the commission has done trees in the past and doing all kinds of fun and exciting things, promoting programs and services. So this is an awesome way for folks to get out there and express themselves and also achieve that People's Choice Award voted by the citizens of Prescott Valley right here at the Civic Center on display through the holiday year starting Friday, November 30th, all the way through January 2nd. This is an entirely free program. There is no entry fee or anything into that. So we encourage everyone to come out. Pictures with Santa is free. The lighting ceremony is free. The light parade. Come out, enjoy, have a great time. Again, Friday, November 30th, kicking off the winter celebrations. 
This is one thing that's getting more and more popular year after year. I suggest you get out early if you want a parking spot and pick your good spot for this. And I think the commission would like to throw out a big thank you to all those that get involved and, and donate their time and put all their lights on and make the parade fun for all of us to watch, all the people that are involved with the Create a Tree and everything else that goes on. And after the parade, you go and get hot chocolate and cookies for guess how much? Free. Free. What? You get everything it's absolutely free. 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 But I tell you what, though, those scouts would appreciate any donation for that cocoa and those cookies because they do that as a little fundraiser. So keep that in mind. Plus, they got some awesome mistletoe, and you can go around and find your sweetheart right there on the spot and get a smooch. You know, got to have that good luck. This, uh, this has become a really big event. Our Festival of Lights now, the community center, the whole area is lit up like it hasn't been in many, many years. It's really a big production, and everybody should come out and celebrate with us. It is. It's fun for the youngsters. They just love seeing all the lights. Yep. Is Bring there a uh, age limit on photos with the Santa say if Elaine wanted to? Uh, Elaine is always uh, welcome to. Ron, you can stay away. So. <laughs> <laughs> We can each sit on his lap. Yeah. Side, right? Very good. And and like Brian says, if you got a couple extra bucks in your pocket to donate to the Cub Scout, the Boy Scouts for all their hard work and effort they're doing, please do so. Most definitely. Okay. All moving right. on. Any guess, questions, comments? Okay. I got a couple more goodies for you if you'd like them. But moving on, we'll go to the upcoming events and classes. All righty. Uh, we have our volleyball registrations that are open uh, open November 5th and will continue all the way through December 21st or until maximum capacity is reached, which is what we aim for. Uh, cost $150 per team. We have co-ed A, B, and C along with women's A, B divisions. We play co-ed A and B on Tuesdays, women's A, B on Wednesdays, and co-ed C on Thursdays. Season games will begin the week of January 7th with game times at 6.30, 7.30, and 8.30. Please visit with us on the town website, pvaz.net. You'll be able to register your team online, or you can give us a call at the office at 759-3090, and we'll be able to assist you through that process. Look forward to having you all there. In addition to that, we have some upcoming day trips. Thursday, December 2nd, we're going to load up, take a trip down to the Desert Botanical Gardens and visit that particular exhibit. I'm very poor in regards to pronunciations on there, but the Luminaras that will be down there, it's a beautiful experience. If you've not been, please join us. This is part of the Southwest Holiday Tradition. Our group will drive down to Phoenix on a night trip to experience the Gardens Holiday Light Show. Trip price is $65. We'll also be presenting this free family event, New Year's Eve experience. Join with us for games, hot cocoa, s'mores, the bonfire, fireworks at both 8.30 and midnight, all over at the Prescott Valley Event Center parking lot over off of Main Street. This is starting off at 6 p.m., go to 8.30, and it's hard to believe that we're already talking about the end of 2018. This is just crazy for me. But let's do it. Let's welcome 2019 in with a big bang. Encourage everybody that wants to come out on this particular free evening to please leave their pets at home for not only their safety but yours and others. If you would like more information, give us a call again, 759-3090. And let's give a big thank you to our departmental partners, which will be the Prescott Valley Police Department, as well as the Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority that will be joining us. So they have all the goodies, so you got to be nice. Play and have fun. So we'll look forward to seeing everybody again December 31st, starting at 6 p.m. for all the fun and festivities of New Year's Eve. We also have the opportunity for basic dog obedience classes. This is a foundation for a great relationship between you and your pup. All basic commands will be taught, such as heal, sit, stay, down, and come. Identify and address different behavioral issues, such as barking, biting, housebreaking, jumping, etc. 
I think this also is a great class for new husbands, too, because this is what I'm reminded of on most cases. Uh, their next class session starts in January. It will be the 2nd, 9th, 16th, 23rd, 30th, and February 6th. We meet once a week for a period of six weeks from 7 to 8 p.m. over at the Boys and Girls Club in Mountain Valley Park. The cost for this uh, dog basic dog obedience class is $150, and participants the human side is to be 16 years or older. So we look forward to seeing everyone and registering for an awesome class. We've got a class going on now full and they are learning tons, 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 tons. So very excited. In addition to that, because we won't see each other in the month of December, is that the 2019 Polar Bear Splash will soon be upon us, so please put in your calendar Saturday, January 25th, 10 a.m. to noon. Join us at Mountain Valley Splash. Why? Because we have another goal. We're going to, again, have... 40 plus polar bears jump in. We had a record setting number last year. I would hope we'd be able to do it again, if not break that record. But why would you want to come out aside from jumping into the pool in the middle of January and being a bear? Well, we have a free pancake breakfast that is brought to us by IHOP. We have the Ice Princess Contest for those hairy guys out there in the world. Why? Because we believe in equality and we need more princesses out there in the world. We have a cool duck slide race, donut eating competitions, ice cream eating competitions, prizes for those bears as an added incentive to jump in there and we've got some cool stuff lined out for you along with prizes for our competition winners and we divide them up between the adults and the kids so everybody can play. So come out and join us again Saturday, January 5th, 10 a.m. to noon, 2019 Polar Bear Splash. And I'm done, sir. Very good. I know. Any questions, you need comments on, on all of our stuff happening in this town? A lot of good stuff. You bet. <coughs> and, and the cost for the polar bear splash? I'm going to charge you $150 minus and discount plus commission. Zero. Perfect. All right. Free. free. All of that. Free 99. For free. For free. <laughs> free 99. A lot of fun. Yeah. And it is. It's a good time. And, and it's another popular event getting bigger and bigger year after year. I remember Record. when you do dove in. Yeah, I, yeah, and I haven't thought about that again for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I just want other people to share the prizes. You know, your uh, Olympic swim team buddies would be very disappointed in you. Right. Well, I'm passing that to Elaine this year. Oh, okay. All right. So. All right. I'll have to borrow. Never mind. <laughs> I got one. No. Moving on, we'll go to the department <laughs> updates, and we'll start off with the director's report with Brian. You know what, I'm gonna to stick to my guns and say I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about the department's report, mine specifically, uh, but I have nothing further to add beyond that. Okay. Questions, comments for Brian on his report? Hearing none, we'll move on to the chairperson's report. So as I was getting ready to attend our meeting tonight, I was watching the news, and one of the new trends for the athletics of just about everybody is pickleball. They're having a huge tournament down in Phoenix. And so I thought, what does what the future look like for parks and recreation and things? And it, I, I looked up some information and it says the future parks will utilize areas such as flood plains, stormwater management areas, even abandoned rail corridors, corridors or abandoned transportation networks. These areas can be converted for hiking and biking trails for open space and for use by the whole community. Number one recreational sport now, right now, is pickleball. Why? It comes from a simple and small sports and activities. Small, um, it also includes this group, our small body group training, mini soccer, body weight training, and ultimate frisbee. So what they're doing is they're, they're condensing sizes of, of activities where people can get them done at a quicker and, and easier pace for just about all ages is what the future is looking at. The added benefit of these scaled down sports are saving time and space and all physical capabilities and ages can utilize them. The example was the pickleball courts. If you already have existing tennis courts, you can utilize those tennis courts and break them down into pickleball courts and have four to as many team on one, one tennis court, you can get a pickleball court. So if you've got multi, you can just utilize so much for example of pickleball. 
Uh, today, people are plugged in for eight hours a day and they need ways to unwind and relax. Recreation is an important part needed in their lives. A family outing, a hiking or biking group, or even a lake can be the answer for relaxation. Communities can often offer many things for recreation, but people's involvement is the key to the recreation and fun. The future of the parks and recreation will depend on those who really want to participate in the whole thing in the first place. Uh, like I say, we, can, we, we hear of child obesity, we hear of all the troubles we're having, and departments can offer all of these programs, but it's going to have to be the utilization of people that actually want to try and come out and do those things to actually help the future of recreation. And sports like pickleball are for all ages. I mean, you know, I really caught on with a lot of seniors. I know up in Pronghorn and different areas, it's just like wildfire for the seniors, but it's all ages. Kids, mm -hmm. little kids, everybody right. can enjoy it. Well, they're teaching and, it in schools now. And as, you, as we look at the future, um, most of the medical studies now are showing that physical activity, exercise, is the best preventive measure for everything, heart, head, everything. Yep. So that's where we need to go. And as Commissioner Frere well knows, utilizing areas, old railroad lines and things like where we can put a bike trail mm -hmm. and get people out on bicycles and, and fun and excitement and, and even walking and just getting people out and seeing the, 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 the land that surrounds them by, by utilizing. And, and I know Pat's been huge in getting some of this in Prescott and he would like to bring that vision to Prescott Valley and start utilizing a lot of our open space areas and throw a bike trail, throw a walking trail. Well, and that's been my experience is just growing up in Prescott as a youth and then living in Prescott Valley as an adult, um, just where you can go on a bike and see parts of your community that you didn't know existed. Even riding the, the multi-use path around town, um, you know, it's a great connector for, for a lot of reasons. Um, and to have, like you said, if rails to trails or, or other natural surface trails were developed, then show the community that it's not just a big flat open area. Show the uniqueness of our terrain and our, our uh, variety of experiences that you can have here. But not only that, you're also uh, well up on the money it can also bring oh, to a town. Absolutely, and I mean, there, there's studies, and I don't have any numbers in front of me, but you know, nationwide, it's a, a billion dollar industry, outdoor recreation, exactly. so, and it just keeps growing every year as, as you know, 30s or 50s, the new 30, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, a num large number of groups in, in the area that, that do active recreation, it's geared toward, mm -hmm. unfortunately, our age bracket, Mr. Witte and Mr. Mm -hmm. Cameron. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I'm not feeling 30. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's a lot of people yes. 10 years, 15 years oh. older than us that are, are yep. engaging in this ac these activities later in life exactly. and, and finding a new passion as they're retired. So. Yep. Yep. And even an, an empty, pace, empty piece of land yep. that we could utilize for just about anything, a bump track or a... Yep a walking path, anything All anymore right. is, is the future coming and Absolutely. we need to try and find and preserving outdoor space is what we're looking at. Absolutely. Very good. Any questions, comments? Thanks for your comments. You bet. Now, hearing none, we'll move on to the Tree Advisory Board. So we, the 2018 annual report has been put in, the 2019 application is coming up and we are just waiting for results of all that. Yes, sir. And we will start then start scheduling our, our meetings to start moving forward. To go, um, another huge thing we do is Arbor Day. Right. Coming up, we'll start planning for that. That is correct. And that will be uh, location this year will be Sunflower Park. Oh, very so we'll good. Be over there with uh, Arbor Day. Very so, good. Doing those kinds of things. And um, <clears throat> Commissioner Gummer, have we received an update in regards to our one applicant that we were anticipating uh, coming out of Nothing APS? Yet. Okay. And, and, and I think what, as we get closer, it's kind of like put us in your mind okay. as we get closer. All right. right now we're spread, spread. Can do. When things start getting close. Okay. All right. Super. And I'll follow up on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. More variety. Any questions on Tree Advisory? Hearing none, we'll go on to Old Business, George Anderson Park Ground, Playground, Ribbon Cutting Ceremony, 930, Saturday, November 17th. 
Yes, sir. I encourage you uh, members of the commission uh, to join us as well as members of the public. I know we've sent out notification to our neighbors uh, surrounding George Anderson to join that morning. Uh, we're going to be taking down the fences uh, quicker than what we're talking about, but some very strong progress is being made out there. So we appreciate our uh, vendor for making a very timely uh, development here on this project and looking forward to new fun to be found out there at uh, George Anderson Park. I think everyone will be quite excited to see all the new activity that can be found there and via this equipment. So we're very happy to have that going on. Uh, plus also the benefits that have come uh, through this revitalization of that playground is it has extended the opportunity for play in some of our other neighboring playgrounds. We were able to take the tire swing uh, out of George Anderson, transfer that over to American Legion Park, and we've actually had a couple of our, the other pieces on that main playground unit be utilized at uh, CASA. Uh, park nice. uh, for one of the the new components over there as well as a couple of other pieces uh, that needed to be put on a couple of other locations so it is continuing to serve us well uh, through that investment where we've been able to make those transitions through other similar pieces very good any questions comments I've been able to see some of the crew putting it, assembling this park, and I think they've been chilly the last few mornings. They have, especially for Valley Boys. These, boy, sure these Valley Boys come up and think, <laughs> why would anybody live here? <laughs> <laughs> Just when the wind's blowing. Yeah. <laughs> very, very true. But it is. It's, it's coming, and it's, it's looking very nice, and it's going to be a huge addition to that area. Okay, moving on, we'll go to the annual, annual park tour date for December 1st. 8 a.m., and I think we're looking at possibly a four-hour window. Yes, sir. Uh, maximum would be that four-hour window. Uh, we're going to be leaving uh, from the Civic Center parking lot. We'll be jumping into the big cargo van. Uh, some of the destinations we have on schedule right now is Mountain Valley Park, uh, the new uh, park development that's going on at the intersection of Glassford Hill and Santa Fe Loop, and then also Fane Park and then possibility of adding in viewpoint on top of that. So a variety of different subject matter for those uh, four different locations, and then uh, what other possibilities that might be able to fit within that time frame. But that is our itinerary. We'll have that agenda developed out to you as well as posted. Uh, so those that would care to join us, that will be our focus. Good. Do we need a motion for that or? Um, in that, we will just add that to our schedule okay. and have it in play. But you know what? Being that it is a added uh, work study, I think it would be very warranted to go ahead and uh, include that the annual park uh, tour take place on the date and time as prescribed. So I would accept a motion for the park tour. I'll make a motion for the annual park tour at 8 a.m. December 1st. 2018. I have a motion of second. Second. All those in favor? Second. Aye. Very good. Moving on, we'll go to new business with event budget planning. Yes, sir. As a matter of annual business, uh, staff always uh, looks to the commission for their recommendations input in regards to short and long-term perspectives as it relates to the development of the new fiscal year budget and its planning. So we would be looking for any suggestions and comments that you would like us to consider. As you know, staff will always be looking in regards to different various capital projects, uh, related ongoing maintenance projects, um, so that we can provide those either within a five-year plan or an annual update. We'll also be looking at staffing. Uh, we'll also be strongly looking at in this next fiscal year because of the new gymnasium facility coming online. Uh, those related uh, plans that need to come into place, not only from programming, but also operating uh, that particular facility in partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, so we'll go from top to bottom, uh, from utilities to custodial services to operating to programming, uh, you name it. So we'll lo be looking at uh, all of those different variables. And then we'll wrap that up all into the direction given to us by our town manager on how our fiscal year will remain flat, grow, or go south uh, one way or the other and make those uh, appropriate adjustments. But we would love to, to hear from you in regards to some different ideas. We've talked about sunflower 
uh, as a possible uh, park improvement location, talked about American Legion and finishing that off, or perhaps out at Antelope for the facilities. So we'll need to look at all of those different things and have some very uh, future pointed discussions on those matters. So we encourage your participation as always and look forward to hearing the good vibes that you have. Very good. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to the Mountain Valley Park Playground p proposal selection. All righty, so in our playground expansion project, uh, this has been very exciting and fun. Uh, we have had a total of 15 different submissions provided by five different vendors. <clears throat> Through uh, review, analysis, and direction, uh, we have uh, narrowed down those selections with three recommendations for your consideration. This is focusing on Mountain Valley Park, it will be inclusive of maintaining our current playground infrastructure that we have out on site at Mountain Valley Park and adding to that footprint of activity and service that we have here. Our specifications for the project was that we have $370,000 total. It needs to be inclusive of all elements related to this playground expansion project. The proposals were to be received electronic, be inclusive of multi-perspective renderings, purchasing discounts, freight, uh, National Playground Safety Institute installation standards, all related taxes, a uh, minimum of two proposals per vendor were to be uh, provided, one demonstrating new equipment that works in concert with the existing, and then a secondary submission that would illustrate new equipment with all current equipment being re removed and reassembled for use at another park to be determined. We found it best, as I recommended earlier, we're going to maintain submission one directive here, maintaining all of our existing equipment and working in concert with that uh, existing equipment with the related new. All uh, proposals needed to conform within the site limitations and demonstrated by their attachment that was provided. Site safety and integrity must be maintained by the installer throughout the entirety duration of construction. Any damages incurred are to be repaired by the installer to a standard approved by the town. The play system shall be designed for ages two to 12 and up. It needs to have multiple playground features, ADA compliancy, either a mix of traditional, non-traditional uh, type of play activity, display a color palette that will work from and include the existing play unit or and as well as other uh, color palette available uh, through their vending source. Safety surfacing proposals are to utilize the current standard of the engineered wood fiber or a pour in place or a mixture of the two and contain no tube enclosures or tube slides. This is the directives that were given to each one of our proposal proposing vendors. <coughs> As I mentioned earlier, we received three qualifying and directive following uh, quotes for this project, and these three are being proposed to you. Uh, two of are from Arizona Recreation Design, and one is from Play It Safe. Each of them have met the requirements of our proposals, uh, which include the site conditions of all remaining play equipment, purchasing contracts, safety surfacing, unit costs, uh, all of the different variables that were included in that, as well as working within the project, project budget, contingency allowances, and any other elements that came into play. So what is being presented to you is being given in a alpha order, not in any type, shape, way, fashion, or form in regards to preferred uh, presentations uh, as determined. Our first one again comes from Arizona Recreation Design. This is their option 4A that they have listed, proposal 3625TN. This particular proposal uh, is adapting quite a few uh, crazy, unique, dynamic, uh, different play apparatus. Uh, the first thing that your eye may gravitate towards is the large yellow uh, perspective here. This is the shoot the court, I believe. 
if I'm reading that correctly, this is a very large webbed play structure, uh, probably in elevations of around 15 feet, uh, extremely long. You'll see in some other perspectives here, it's uh, size and scale as it relates to the other play equipment. In addition to that, you have a Apollo spinner. That is the large uh, pine tree shaped climbing apparatus that also that entire unit spins as well. And then there in the middle, there's another yellow piece. That is our ADA surface spinner that's located there. So those that are wheelchair bound would be able to transfer directly into that play unit or transfer from their chair to a seated position within it, um, join with multiple others in regards to that play apparatus. And then the blue island surrounding that is represented by the pour and place surfacing uh, that they are proposing. I'm going to go through a number of different slides that gives you more of a perspective in regards to the yellow piece. So that is what's going to be changing in each one of these slides to give you a perspective on that play unit. It is literally the same unit, just from different vantage points. And the, the Apollo spinner thing. Yes, sir. Is that an upper floor on that, or is that just a, something to balance? No, it? you are exactly right. That is a whole other upper floor. So if you climbed up in there, you could also set inside oh. on the webbing. Get a different yep. perspective. Yes, sir. There's another view. And then last. Okay, and again, those are just focusing on the different vantage points on that yellow uh, attraction there. <coughs> this is an aerial view that would show you then the layout. Uh, in your upper top right-hand section, there are the different play pieces that exist. We have uh, three bays worth of swings. We have a balanced play system. We have the existing main play uh, ground unit, and then we also have a uh, climber unit. Each one of these will be re relocated uh, throughout the uh, playground areas that exist today. Our swings will go nearest the parking lot, so this would be the north end of the play area. Our pl main playground would remain exactly in the same footprint as it exists today. The climbers, which are located on the north end of the play, would come down to the eastern edge of the uh, play area. And then the balance system that is also located on the north end would come to the south nearest the Ramada, and that is that large uh, gray square, brown square down at the bottom of the screen. The, again, the big large blue pool area is the pour in place uh, rubberized surfacing. Uh, that would flow throughout the particular site. All the other area represented in brown would be the engineered wood fiber. This again is for the older five to 12 year old group. And now we're going to switch over and look at our uh, five and under. Oh, my apologies. Here's another but uh, total top down view. So it'll be more representative where you can see how our three bays of swings, our balance system, our climber system all get moved around and how the size and scale represents itself as you see it compared to the other play areas. Any questions on this uh, area of the playground? Okay. Now we're gonna jump on the younger side. This will be our five and under play area. This will involve the addition of two new play units. Uh, the Again, the uh, conal or, or tree representation here is just a smaller version of the same similar uh, play apparatus. This is the Apollo spinner. Uh, located there. And then in addition to that would be an ADA inclusive uh, spinner as well. Uh, this you would transfer from your chair into that. Uh, so both abled and uh, disabled folks would be able to get right in there and spin them. So it's kind of a modern version of the, the old merry-go-round, if you will, um, spin and play. So a lot of fun. And then in addition to that, the pour and place surfacing uh, would also be there represented in blue with the rest of the area treated in what's currently there with the engineered wood fiber. 
and we'll also get a little bit of a aerial perspective. Um, again, right in the middle of that is the existing playground unit, and just to the further east or the top of the screen is the existing ADA swings, uh, the T-bar swings that we have there as well. Uh, so that would be how this particular site would be laid out with these new additions. And then this is just an overview of in regards to the pour in place rubberized surfacing versus the engineered wood fiber. Okay. All right, next is our option 4B, proposal 3626TN. This is literally the same play equipment as you saw in option 4A, just configured in a different way. Um, so basically, our swings, uh, three bays of swings would remain uh, generally right in the same area as they currently exist now. The main play structure would be in the same place. We would move the balance play as well as the climber play into new areas to the south and then replace those uh, play areas with the Apollo spinner and the ADA surface spinner and consolidate that uh, rubberized uh, pour and play surface on the north, or yes, the north end of that play area. But it is just uh, balanced in a different way. All the same pieces, all the same integration and operation, just configured more so in a almost an existing fashion, okay? On the opposite side, literally the same play setup um, and no changes there as what was illustrated in option 4A, okay? Next, oh, my apologies. Any questions in regards to option 4B? Just for anybody viewing at home, the clarification on the pour in place on this option is, is the footprint smaller and <coughs> that is correct. Yes, sir. Less of a maintenance concern. Yes, and, um, and basically the big change in this is that it's more focused on the surface spinner. It, the, the previous image represented that portions of it would be underneath the current and existing playground, but then take you to then that surface spinner as it's located here, okay? So that's the, the biggest real change. From an economic standpoint, um, this helps minimize that a little bit and more directly advances you into that location, okay? Any questions on 4B? Okay, and I know we've chewed through this during work study and you've had these materials, so I know you've been pounding through it, so. All right, our last proposal comes from Play at Safe Playgrounds. Uh, this is a vendor you're familiar with as it relates to Bob Edwards and George Anderson Park. Um, this is their option one, proposal 6885. This rendering uh, shows you perspectives uh, from both directions. Um, so the big important thing to take from this is you see the island of blue as it exists in this illustration. That's to represent the existing swings and the existing playground. They would remain in their current locations and all of the new added features would be wrapped around those. <coughs> in addition to also pour and place surfacing coming into those uh, locations. This one has uh, quite a, a degree of variance of activities. Uh, you'll see that uh, much similar to our proposal uh, coming from Arizona Recreation Design, uh, again we have the large uh, tree or cone-shaped uh, spinning apparatus. Uh, what's cool about this is within the body of that is also a spinner. Uh, so you can spin within the spin, if you will, uh, going out there. That is a, a very uh, highly used play feature out at Bob Edwards. Um, then we have this nice, big, large uh, ball-shaped uh, feature here with all of the different climbing uh, webs uh, within that. And I would call this a very large, and, I, and I'm not doing justice uh, naming these things, but what represents itself as a large tarantula, if you will, out here. Uh, again, all kinds of designed climbing, playing, bouncing, a lot of uh, the belts 
as you transfer uh, through the unit, you can bounce uh, your way through, uh, climb up the inside, go every which way, every which direction in doing those things. A lot of uh, ground feature play. We would want to work with this vendor in regards to perhaps stretching out those panels so that it's more in a linear format or a, a snaking format as opposed to creating an enclosure there. Uh, we like to maintain visibilities and safeties out there in doing that. Uh, but a lot of high energy uh, active uh, play uh, through this design. In addition to that, this is the again the, the five to 12 year old age group. Before I transition over to the five and under, are there any questions, concerns, or items? Okay, all right. We'll jump right over here. This is your uh, five and under uh, play area. Again, the blue location represents the existing swings, existing equipment, some pour in place. Uh, we have a, another variation of that uh, sit inside and spin uh, so folks can uh, get right in there. The neat part about this particular unit as opposed to sitting and everyone facing each other, this one you sit opposing each other. So you actually can sit inside, one person's face is in, the other word person faces out. Uh, so that's a neat little social interaction design that they have here. A uh, little cup spinner, uh, again, some climbing apparatus. Again, would have the desire of working with the vendor in regards to this uh, tube unit here uh, as a, an item that we would work to upgrade. And then another unit here relating to uh, drums and piano and I think some xylophone and some other fun musical uh, apparatus in regards to this uh, linear snaking uh, feature in our five and under design location. Um, so that combined then how this would be an overall layout as it involves uh, the various different play equipment here on site and its interaction with the existing units. Again, leaving the swings, the main play structure, the five and under play structure and its T-swings over there uh, as they exist and a full wraparound of new fun energetic high activity locations. So those are our three proposals. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, as well as then take from this meeting any recommendation that you might have to <clears throat> propose to council for their upcoming December 6th commission, or council meeting in which they would then give guidance to staff. One thing I didn't notice, I guess, during the work study was, um, I guess it'd be the Burke, the, the Burke uh, proposal. Did they have anything for like ADA? I know we were talking about kind of making that all inclusive. Was that like a, I know it has that one merry-go-round in the, in the youth section, if you would. Yes. Um, is that, is that going to be surfaced as such? Is that going to be that <coughs> pour and play or? Surfacing will, will definitely be there. Uh, their, their main elements would be our interactive panels that we have on both sides. Uh, we would have the ADA components as it exists in the current play structure. And then as you had mentioned in regards to the spinner, Okay. as well on the uh, five and under side. Okay. So yes, sir. As, and then also the, the pour in place definitely aids that uh, transition. Is, is all that brown area representing the pour in play? There the would whole? be, def uh, the brown area there would be our current engineered wood fiber, but there would be some transitionary uh, pour in place that would take you to that spinner. Okay. Thank you. And make those things work. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, let me just make a, a comment to start out. Um, I really like the uh, Arizona Recreation Option 4B with the uh, Shoot the Curl and the Apollo Spinner. Um, when we're looking at this and when you went out for these bids, you looked at options of completely replacing everything or integrating and using the existing equipment. All of these use the existing equipment, which is Correct. the traditional equipment. Um, if you go by there, you'll see kids using the slides, the swings, and so adding something different and new with a little splash, yes. I think really makes sense. We took that first step with uh, Bob Edwards and kind of got partially away from it, and this would be maybe another step. And Chairperson Gummer has suggested that we need to look to the future and new ideas and thoughts, and I kind of like that uh, 
option 4B with uh, shoot the curl and the Apollo, plus we have all the traditional stuff right there too. That would be very correct in regards to those mixed uses, if you will. Um, one of the items, and I apologize to each of you, one of our items in discussion during the work study uh, that did not come up, we also had a public opinion poll. A lot of comments came from that in regards to, and it was tough, uh, A, number one, because options A and B, we did not have their current illustrations. An integrated illustration is what you are seeing tonight. Uh, so it was very tough for the public to be able to see this. They saw different pieces. But they did not know how they all functioned. The other thing that was very difficult for people to be able to see and recognize in either of these illustrations was the fact that we were maintaining the swings in the existing playground. So there were a lot of comments in regards to that. And that was another driving factor in regards to why we're choosing and going down this road. Because uh, a lot of folks were like, how can you do a playground and not have swings? How can you do this? They also commented on in regards to how they would like to see shade as part of these builds and these designs uh, based upon dollars. Uh, they do come at a, at a premium cost, and in regards to these, that was not a, an available item uh, for us to be able to go down. So we would have to retract out in order to put in, and then it would be limited based upon dollars and what that coverage would uh, be available to us for. Uh, a lot of them were also looking at in regards to what accessibility elements were within these playgrounds and doing those. and how our current does some of those things, but some of our new elements are providing more in addition to that. I know in regards to our future, uh, we're looking at new park uh, development that's gonna be coming online, and I know that that has been an item that has been, and when I say an item, the accessibility and the usability of playgrounds and the simple fact of a higher level of um, inclusion and uh, ability to be able to actively play uh, through that process has been something that has been expressed in citizens academies, it's been expressed in commission meetings, it's been expressed by commissioners and those types of things. And I do know that that is the focus of the new playground that would be coming in uh, to one of our new future parks, um, which will have a, a whole uh, new uh, process. Uh, we, you know, with all of our playgrounds, we reach out to the neighborhoods and we invite folks and we find participation. We found that in Tonto Park when we went there. We found it in Antelope. We found some involvement here in, in George Anderson. We had involvements in Bob Edwards. So we've always had that outreach and we're going to continue um, with a very highly focused aspect of that in our future playgrounds and doing those types of things. Um, so I think everything has been addressed based upon what the proposal requirements were. Um, the community feedback on these projects in which uh, proposal number three from Burke had the highest level of response uh, back in regards to things. Uh, but I can tell you this much, uh, being able to represent everything in a, in a more cohesive fashion was not available to us at the time that that survey went out. So I apologize to the public from that standpoint, but it was the tools that we had uh, to be able to work with to give perspectives and shapes and dimensions and those kinds of things. And in hearing what you all have expressed as in regards to wow and scale and scope and high energy and those types of things, all three of these proposals would definitely reach that. And we can have fun with some color and doing all kinds of cool things. But I, I appreciate your reflection in regards to use what's there and let's add more to it and go crazy and have a good fun time with this and let's give it uh, the best that we can uh, with what's available to us. If, if you could not see this laid out with the existing equipment, I, can, I don't think we would really appreciate the different proposals. <coughs> I mean, we have the advantage, uh, in, in fact, I just stopped by there a couple of days ago to look at the existing equipment. And, but if you don't have the perspective of seeing how the new fits with the old, right. um, it would be very difficult to... And it still is difficult 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying to a certain degree because none of the vendors are able to take what's existing and superimpose Marketing. that into this design um, and being able to show all of those variables other than uh, from the top-down perspectives as we can kind of see it here with this Burke illustration. And then again, uh, previously, and I apologize for the, the quick flip on here, but also from this top down. Yeah. So you can, that's the only methodologies that we can use to really kind of see how those footprints work with each other um, and create that interactive flow and activity. Um, and so mm -hmm. those are the items that we have to, to work with. And I, again, like I say, I don't think there's any wrong decision. It's just making that decision, and it's a matter of, you know. Well, and as we discussed in the, the works today, I think the, the one thing that my eyes kept going to is the, the perspective looking through the, the shoot the curl rope course. Uh, that's just, to me, uh, visually very appealing and looks like a lot of fun. I want to go climb on it. <laughs> you know, well, one and that kind of looks down the tube. I think it's one back from that one. If, right. Yeah, that one. There you go. Yeah. And truthfully, that's kind of the beauty of, of all of these is yeah. the, the parent can directly engage as well, yeah. you know, versus a number of these things, uh, you know, our neighborhood playgrounds trying to be able to climb up and get inside and go down some of things and whatnot just doesn't fit uh, a parent body. So, yeah, to that point. Oh, th this could be a, you know, uh, spider monkey's dream here. So. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think back in the past, we used to look at what's the biggest bang for our buck, where we would think, wow, we're getting six pieces of equipment instead of one, one big. And I think what, you know, when we talked about looking out of the box <clears throat> on the uh, park discussion, <clears throat> excuse me, of the future, where bridges become shades and shades become picnic areas and and it, we also talked about integrating older kids and younger kids in one area instead of separating different lots because mom has to stay with the youngster and the other child gets to go play in the bigger lot but then mom's like okay I need you and we need to go they leave earlier because the mom is separated from the two children so instead of integrating separate now the new future is going to be where they come together and when I see something like this shoot the curl I see older kids helping younger kids and, and integrating with younger kids and showing how to climb and doing different things. And, and like I say, the, I can understand the public looking at this saying, wow, we're going to get this many pieces of equipment instead of these two big pieces. But the bigger picture is, I believe, is how much of a wow factor this is going to be once they actually see it. And, and even this, this spinner, a two-story. Yeah. Spinner, more or less, where kids can climb up to the top and get in. And I, I really think that I like 4B myself as far as what we're looking at here. <clears throat> Brett, any comments? Um, I, you know, just looking at the proposals and had some time to digest them, I do agree with Buzz and the idea that, you know, mixing the, the ADA specific spinner or the accessible spinner with everything else around it, um, I think that's a great idea. Um, having the having the, the 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 B option, I think, is the one right for B. Mm -hmm. um, is a, is I think is a good choice because it brings that that big structure to the front. It brings a couple of big items to the front, and it allows for our our old equipment to still be utilized in that old fashion, if you would, uh, swing, slide, that type of assembly, and still have a pretty unique structure and uh, kind of bring it to Prescott Valley like a new age type of deal. So I think it's kind of neat. Out of the box. Yep. Pat. Uh, absolutely. You know, like I like I mentioned, the first first perusal of uh, the proposals this morning or this afternoon, um, you know, I was along the lines of, well, we're getting a whole lot more bang for our buck with the one that offered more equipment. But you know, I I think the the wow factor, the the thinking out of the box, the getting the kids out on that uh, shoot the curl and the the Christmas tree spinner or whatever it's called, um, you know, is is going to be a big draw, and I think it's going to be packed. Uh, just looking at other playgrounds online that have similar similar type structures, the kids seem to love them and 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 can wear themselves out on them pretty easily. Yeah. Elaine, any choices on your 
Any comments on your choice? I was uh, before looking at A, but I think B will be the better one uh, simply because uh, less maintenance on some mm. of the blue issues, and I think I will switch to doing the B. Yeah. Ron? Thanks to Ron. Yeah, I, I like the 4B. I mean, I, just for all the things we've already talked about, and the layout seems to work. Um, maybe staff could work with uh, the vendor on the uh, rubber surface, whatever staff thinks is, is best for that. Okay. To, and to also, uh, Brian, uh, explain the difference in prices for yes. those two. Yes, yep, we will go through that. Yeah, everything is within budget, so yes. Do we want to make a motion? I think we have a consensus that the majority of us like 4B as our option. Yeah. And if that's the consensus, I would uh, accept a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, recommend Arizona Recreation Option 4B okay. um, for the playground equipment um, to integrate with the existing equipment in Mountain Valley Park. I'll second. I have a second. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to do a roll call vote if we could, and so this way everyone can hear each individual vote. We'll start with Elaine. Yes, 4B. Ron? Yes. Brett? Yes. Pat? Yes. And I would also say yes to 4B. So that's the one you can take, and I think yes, I really believe the public will be happy once they get to actually see this in place and go, the kids. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. And we are kind of getting out of the box of what we used to always normally think of, wow, we're going to get six pieces of this, and we're <laughs> going to get one, only two of this. I think we are looking to the future. I will take that recommendation and move it to council, and it's slated for the December 6th council meeting. And uh, I, I know I said it in jest earlier, but uh, and I like the yellow and the blue, but that is uh, the opposing community's high school colors. So if there's any other options that can be shown, maybe? Yes. <laughs> we can work on those things. Yeah. <laughs> it looked Almost like definitely. they had quite a, quite a scheme of colors on yeah. that. Yes. Uh, the, the rainbow's a plenty here, so. Perfect. All righty. Okay, moving on, we'll go to the work study request meetings. The first one will be November 27th, 2018, <laughs> at 3.30 p.m. in the conference room. Do I have a, is, if that works for everybody, would I, I would accept a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, schedule work study for November 27th, 2018, at 3.30. I'll second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor, November 27th for a work study meeting? Aye. Opposed? Okay, moving on. We don't normally do much in December because of the holidays, but with this master plan development, we'd like to also have a meeting in December 11th, 3.30. I'll make a, with everybody. make a motion to schedule a work study meeting for December 11th at 3.30. I have a motion to have a second. I'll second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Uh, moving on, we'll go to other. Anybody else have anything that they would like to bring up at the commission meeting pertaining to? Yes, sir. I would just like to wish uh, Commissioner Trevini uh, well wishes in regards to a quick recovery. So he's not with us this evening, uh, but he's uh, the new bionic man. So, uh -huh. <laughs> look forward to seeing him back in January. We can watch him jump, climb all over that spider, yeah, that shoot yes, the curl. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely George Anderson, guaranteed. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> uh, moving on, we'll unscheduled public appearances. Looks like we will have none. So, with that, we would like a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn uh, the November 13th meeting. For motion to adjourn. And a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, Prescott Valley. We, we usually do not have a December meeting because of the holidays, so enjoy mm -hmm. all of the Christmas specials and, of course, the Polar Splash, and we'll talk to you about that when we come back. All right.